Let's pick up in this part two with the house wrap. I like this hydro gap. These little blue dots are supposed to create some separation with the siding and help with water drainage. I wanted to use part of my container as exterior siding. I wasn't sure how, but I didn't figure that I could make it perfectly watertight. And so I wanted a good solid house wrap and went with this hydro gap. Now most dudes for solo house wrap application suggest putting something long in the house wrap tube, like this rake I have here, to keep the tube standing up. Then the tool that you really need is a little one hand staple thrower, which I didn't have. But I turned the pressure way down on my air compressor and this little brad gun actually worked. I figured it would shoot brads right through the house wrap, but it did the job to keep it in place until I could come back and put some cap nails in. Notice that I got rid of the rake as well. What I found was if I stretched the house wrap over the full face of the wall, things went a lot more smoothly. I forgot to put the drip edge in, so I went back and added that when I was done with the house wrap. And the house wrap instructions say that taping the vertical seams is optional. I went ahead and did that. The house wrap manufacturer also provided videos and some specs on how to install windows. And I just followed those to a T and didn't have any problems. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I use as many salvage materials as I can. This is a salvage window. That's why it's a different size and different color than my other window. With that done, I made a flashing for the front door. I learned how to do this watching the YouTube channel of the Perkins Builder Brothers. Great channel, highly recommend those guys. With the shipping container below, in this project I use salvage doors, and I think I've just about had enough of that for the time being. Got to make the frame to fit, and that's frustrating. Then fix up the door, and it's a whole bunch of work. But I was able to get my little frame shimmed into place, and the door uh, level-ish. <laughs> A while back, the river authority that manages the lake that this project sits on banned people from having exposed styrofoam floats underneath their docks because they were polluting the lake. And when that happened, people pulled their docks out of the water and a bunch of foam piled up over here. I showed this little styrofoam cutting device that I made in my pallet deck video and it's the wrong size, it's not powerful enough. And because of that, it's basically a two-man job. So I had to squander the work talents of my buddy Ryan Lilly on cutting styrofoam. It was fun figuring out how to do it, and then it sucked doing it once we figured out the process. But I was able to insulate the entire cabin and the roof using this uh, salvage styrofoam. We use spray foam to fill in those little gaps you see. When I made my shipping container cabin last year, I made sure to save the panels that I cut out, knowing that I could find a use for them somewhere. I ultimately hauled them out to the lake and decided to incorporate them into this upper cabin. I decided to use the big cutout from the front doors on the front of the cabin and just about killed myself getting it in place.
To make this panel watertight, I cut some angle steel and went around the top and the sides of the panel, welding it into place. This was just a tack weld. Anything more would have burned the house wrap. So I laid the panel back down and finished the weld. I had to make a run down to the local Ace Hardware and I was looking at metal cutting drill bits. And some old timer, not an employee, mind you, walked up and said, hey, you probably cool your drill bits with oil, right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, what you should do is hit them with a spray bottle of soap and water. That works better. So I've been doing it. It's been working okay. Although what I didn't think at the time was if you spray water on bare metal and then leave it, it's gonna rust. <laughs> and then I cut a little drip edge to put on top of the angle steel. Try to kick water down and out. After a lot of deliberation, I decided to go with cedar siding and to try to miter the corners. So everything got cut at a 45 on the corners and had to align pretty tightly. I knew this would take a while, but I also figured it would improve my skill with the miter saw. And I think it did. For the most part, I feel pretty good about the corners. I made the soffits out of plywood, got those in place, and then finished up the cedar siding. Over the last year or so, I've fallen into a nice little pattern. Tear down a barn, keep the materials, build something new. This is a property that I recently sold, and just before the sale closed, I tore down an old barn. I salvaged a bunch of three and a quarter pine out of that old barn and used it for the floor in this cabin. That old floor has been in that barn for a long time. So I knew this would be a good exercise in really learning how to rehab old flooring. With the flooring in place, I rented a big floor sander and put a good sand on it. I didn't put quite enough of a sand on it. The big sanding sheets are pretty expensive and I knew there was only so much I was going to be able to do with the floor this old. I tried a couple of different wood putties and wasn't real impressed with either one. I mentioned those shipping container panels and I used the second panel as the beginning of my interior siding. Same idea as before, but I had square tubing instead of angle iron by the time I got to this project, so I used that square tubing instead. And then I surrounded it with some shiplap that I was able to tear out of that old barn. I thought I might do the whole wall with the shiplap or maybe even the whole interior. But I only had enough for some of the wall and my local salvage place tried to charge me 25 bucks for an eight foot board. When I asked the salvage store owner why it was so expensive, all I heard was some muttering, an expletive, and the words Chip and Joanna. And so I noped that idea super hard and instead went with plywood sheeting. I've been seeing a lot of plywood interior siding in the cabin books I've been looking at. Normally someone uses something nicer than what I've got here, but I didn't really care about a rough utilitarian look, which is kind of the vibe I've got at this whole building site. If you've seen my other videos, you know this building site is boat access only. You can't drive to it. All the materials come over by boat. 
And the plywood store is a 45 minute drive away. So a cutting error on the last piece of plywood is kind of mentally defeating. My least favorite thing to bring over by boat is these eight foot sheets of plywood. Kind of a tough one man deal, but back across the lake, more wood, fixed it, continue on, love and life. When I thought about building this little cabin, there were a hundred little things I just didn't think about. And building the little interior window frames is one of those things. No big deal, just when you conceptualize a project, there's all kinds of little stuff that you probably won't be thinking about. In part one, I had hung some salvage roof joists from that same barn teardown and laid cedar siding on top, sort of building the roof inside out to highlight those joists. Once that was done, I laid down some tar paper and hit it with those cap fasteners and then built a frame on top of the roof to put the insulation in. The insulation, no surprise, <laughs> is more of someone's old dock. <laughs> and when folks build this way, they'll normally seam these sheets of insulation together with zip tape and then run one by fours horizontally perpendicular to the roof sheets. These are deck boards that I cut in half and I'm sinking six inch timber locks all the way down into the roof joists. I had to come back and put some little spacers here because my insulation is a little bit shorter than it needed to be. Because the roof is sort of built inside out, I've got real big pieces of fascia and so pressure treated plywood was good for that job. The roof was maybe the hardest part for me. I didn't really know the terminology and how to talk to people about what I needed, but I ended up finding a metal building supplier and I just told them the dimensions and shape and angle of the roof and that was all they needed. They put a whole package of materials together for me. And that package included these roof sheets. I gave them a dimension that was actually too long so I had to cut the roof sheets down a little bit. Better than being short, I suppose. The package included these little foam gap fillers and all the screws that I needed and then the rakes and the eaves. Because the windows were different colors and to match the shipping container below, I went ahead and painted the frames of the doors and windows to match the container. And then I painted the trim to match the deck. The trim here doesn't match the trim on the shipping container below, so I might make that consistent in time. Next, I ran electricity straight up from the container box below and into the side of the building. My old man came out and helped me run the electric line from the power pole to the breaker box. And I learned a lot working with him. And more importantly, I had a roadmap with the existing setup for everything I needed to do here. By following along with the existing system, I was able to figure out how to wire these outlets, a light switch, and a light. Nevertheless, I was still pretty surprised when it worked the first time. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. Just like that. One of the things you probably shouldn't do is design a building during an extreme weather period. I designed this cabin when the highs were in the 100 teens degrees hot and the sun out here sets over the lake so the afternoon sun comes in through the front of the container and makes it pretty warm. 
Well, I decided for the front of this cabin, I pretty much keep it dark and window free other than this fun little marine window. And I don't know if that makes quite the look I was going for. It definitely stays cool in here, but it looks a little funky to just have a tiny window on the front of your cabin. Now, I thought this marine window was gonna be a lot bigger and I wanna replace it someday with one that is, but that should give you a good feel for the design decision that I made here. I wanted to try to make the furniture in here and do so with simple and free materials. So I used another piece of the dock as foam, as basically a box spring, and then left over cedar siding on the exterior. I'm always on the lookout for building materials and I found this nice stack of super dry tree slices and while keeping an eye out for rattlesnakes, picked up a number of them for different projects. One of those projects became a bedside table for this cabin. And I did one of those epoxy pours that you see and it turned out pretty nicely. Some art from my favorite artist, Alvaro Nadio, to pull the room together. A shelf that I found on the lot next door and fixed up. A skeleton that I built. This area is called Hog Bend, but the closest thing I had was a javelina, so it's gonna have to do. One of the things that kept me up at night was the concern of falling off one of these crappy scaffolds. So it gave me great pleasure to tear them down and call the project complete. Let's close with a cost breakdown. I didn't keep great records and I did this all after the fact, so take it with a grain of salt. I won't go through each item, but you can pause here and look at approximately what I spent on each item. The total is at the bottom. It cost about 5,700 bucks to put this together. If you go back to my shipping container video, that project cost about 6,500 exclusive of transportation. So maybe that'll help you compare and contrast. Of course, I've got a lot more money into exterior siding on this project. I don't have any money in flooring or roofing or anything on the shipping container. Just very different types of buildings. And here's a list of free and salvaged materials that I used. Of course, the dock foam for insulation. The door and door frame were salvaged. The flooring and the shiplap came from my old barn teardown. And just about everything in the interior, other than the mattress, I built for free. I hope you found this useful, or entertaining, or both. Until next time, this has been The Coyote.